The following video is brought to you by Unsmartphone Video, where the phone's not smart, but the message is. Thank you. Um, Chris, hello. Chris Franciscani, NBC News. Um, it seems like a laudable proposed treaty and could be helpful, particularly in places like Europe where the people and the governments have pushed back aggressively against at least tech surveillance. But here in the United States, isn't the fundamental challenge you're going to face the fact that most Americans just don't care? You know, we've seen this over and over and over again with all of the revelations that have come out in the last few years. Most people just don't care. And isn't that going to be the hardest hurdle to overcome? Here? Yes. That's exactly. There was a comment over there like, uh, take care of uh, big pictures. That, like, when you have like the, the privacy issue, it's like you have to bring to a ground that people can understand what privacy really means. So this entire campaign is around this. It's like we don't have a clearly understand of like for someone in America, privacy means one thing. For someone in Germany, another thing. For someone in South Arabia, another thing. So this entire campaign, it's to get the countries and the people in those countries to get into an understanding what that privacy means for all of us and why we wanted to make this change. Because worldwide, like at say, we're just not like countries anymore. We are a global community and we have to talk about this issue as global community. So this is a campaign to make people in America aware of what they understand about privacy and all around the world. But they do understand about privacy and they still haven't done anything. Snowden, Greenwald, all of these revelations, the Washington Post, nobody did anything. I mean, journalists got upset, but the journalists didn't do anything after the AP Bureau was... Sorry. I'm just skeptical that the American public, no matter how many shocking revelations you provide to them to the media, are going to react in the way that I think a lot of people in this room would, or investigative reporters would, or even the I'm investigative sure reporters. Something that has changed. What I see today that has changed is the corporation side of everything. Facebook, Apple, all these companies are encrypting their brothers. You may not see the change that everybody is not talking about privacy every day, but those changes are starting the corporation because they are afraid that everybody is asking for that. You sit down on the television and you see at the end doing a commercial saying, today you're not being hacked. You see, uh, you see today you're safe. My company was not hacked. You see the companies moving towards that. And what the companies are doing, you want to think, you just want to think that they are doing that just because they wanted to protect you? From no, it's, it's, no, it's simply a business decision. It has nothing to do with the kind of outrage that you're going to need to push forward this treaty for at least no, here. No, actually, actually, this is what this is a demand. The companies are putting themselves in a situation because there's a demand for it. If there was no demand, they would not be making this change because so much to the companies. So already there's a mindset where we just have to have a huge debate on that. And that's for all the journalists who control the media to stop in this debate and not just dispel whatever the government wants to say. But Sven, do you want to add anything to that? I know you've written about that very point extensively, about people that don't care. Yeah, I think David made most of the points. I mean, obviously the Snowden revelations became a huge story in the United States, um, and there was an enormous amount of outrage, particularly over domestic spying. You know, I think you're right that um, people care a huge amount about spying on themselves and not that much about spying on other people in other countries. Um, but even in the U.S., um, you know, the political pressure was so significant that lots of people from both political parties ran on a platform of ring the NFA in. Um, there was a huge bipartisan movement in Congress over two years um, to introduce and then debate and vote on reforms of the NSA, the first time since 9-11 that the government has reined in its own powers in the name of terrorism rather than expanded it. Obviously, none of that would happen without there being some significant political interest on the part of the citizenry. Um, and I also do think that the biggest issue, as I indicated earlier, David just referenced, 
is the fact that these companies, you know, Facebook, Google, Yahoo, are not just providing encryption to their services, they're triggering a serious war with the U.S. government um, over what it is that they're doing. I mean, they're being branded publicly by their former partners, the U.S. government, as being essentially aiders and abettors of terrorists by creating a world of encryption that the government can't answer and therefore helping terrorists. Why are they willing to risk that kind of damage to their relationship with the U.S. government, to their public perception, um, unless it's because they perceive it, as you said in your question, as being really important to their business to provide encryption. Why do they provide, perceive it as being really important to their business to provide encryption? Because people around the world care a lot um, about knowing that their private communications and what they do on the internet, which is more or less our whole lives now, um, is not being just turned over in mass um, to the government. The one thing I do agree with you on is that the U.S. is probably one of the most difficult political climates in which to get this treaty enacted. Um, and uh, that's because in some sense the treaty sort of targets the, the powers of the U.S. government. Um, and the idea is to take what we already know is this really intense and massive support around the world for Snowden's revelations, for what he did, um, and create an international movement around it. Um, that in some sense restricts what the U.S. government wants to do in the name of universal human rights. Um, so I think there would be a lot of support in the U.S., but there would be a huge amount of support in lots of other countries as well. And part of the campaign is aimed at trying to increase public concern to make people aware that they ought to care perhaps more than they do right now. Any final media questions? Because we'll stop and wrap things up. Any final media